What's in your bag, Creighton? You want me to go first? I'm really missing this Les I-5. Oh, did you get it? No, it was their first EP, and I can't find it anywhere, but I found Let's Stay Friends. Hell yeah. It's a great record. It is indeed. I'm gonna start, this one's like my favorite record. And I didn't actually get it for myself, I got it for our friend Gabby. This is Ron Wood's yes, sir. first solo album. I've got my own album to do. I guess this is like right when he had joined Rolling Stones or something like that. No, he wasn't in the faces anymore, but God, I don't think they can even list all the people that are on it just due to like legal reasons. Yeah. But there's like Rod Stewart's on it, Keith's on it, George Harrison's on there, Ringo plays some drums, Billy Preston's on there. Mac plays keyboards, Ian McCloggan, R.I.P. from The Faces. But yeah, this is a fantastic album that I think everyone should own. This caught my eye. I used to work in the uh, chicken business with my dad and my brother. And my mom worked there for a small amount of time too. And she would say that we have to put on the side of the chicken trucks. Poultry in Motion. I thought that was pretty funny, and, but my dad didn't go for it. Anyway, this is called Poultry in Motion um, by a guy <laughs> named Hazel Adkins. It's the chicken collection from 1955 to 1999. And he's eating chicken on the front and he's devouring chicken on the back as well. Number one is Chicken Walk, two is Chicken Hunch, three is Chicken Hop, four is Chicken Run, and Chicken Shake, Blues, Pick That Chicken, Chicken Twist, Chicken on the Bone, Chicken Walk. Come on, baby, do a chicken, chicken walk. You'll like it. Have you heard it? I, I've heard him, he's really good. Dude, I've never heard of him, and but we'll see. Well, I got this hat, too. I don't know if y'all are gonna charge me for this or not, but, <laughs> but uh, anyway. I got a meditation book called Fuck That. You know, just stuff that you would read on the toilet. It, like this one says, turn the page again. I don't know. I like that. Real thoughtful stuff. And <laughs> feel the horseshit of the external world fade from your awareness. The back of the book, it just plain as day. Let this book help you find peace with the challenges that surround you. Because they are fucking everywhere. <laughs> <I bet. laughs> the first thing I grabbed was this Robbie Basho Twilight Peaks which I haven't heard, but I've listened to Robbie Basho before. I'm a big fan of like fingerstyle guitarists, and uh, Amoeba always has a really cool selection that kind of like sits over the top. I don't know who picks them all out, but uh, I'm always like, oh, that looks great. Terry Reed. Oh, hell, Creighton. Oh, no way. I also got Terry Reed. Yeah, I had no idea this was even coming out at all. I didn't, I haven't even read anything yeah, it's about expanded. this one. Expanded from that original one, so now there's like some demos, I think. Yeah. I can't wait, man. This said original issue, it's a David Crosby record called If I Could Only Remember My Name. Oh, yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> Get through another city day without thinking about getting in. $6.99? That has to be a mistake. $6.99 just to look at the cover. Have you not heard that yet? I haven't heard this, no. Oh. Yeah. They had the Graham Nash Crosby one too. I was yeah. Like, I gotta get this. Lemmy, White Line Fever. Huge Lemmy fan. I also got another bass player's book, How to Be a Man. So How to Be a Man, White Line Fever. Big, big fan of Duff. I mean, you can hear his yeah. bass on those records and it's awesome. Bill plays bass too. I like bass players. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got. I just got three. Let's stay on the book theme. I got um, The Record Store of the Mind by Josh Rosenthal, who's a friend of mine. He runs Tompkins Square Records. He's got fantastic taste and I think in music and he finds a lot of obscure uh, fingerstall guitar players and reissues a lot of stuff. So just interested to see what he's doing in his book here. I got this awesome Otis Redding record. It's not just sentimental. I don't know if this is a collection or what, but I've been like spazzing on all the deep cuts of Otis's catalog. I'm Coming Home is like my favorite song right now. Trick or Treat is bad to the bone. Trick or treat, 
and Cupid. Cupid's the damn shit. Very glad to have this, like, the real deal in my hand now. I just gotta get it home safely. I have a book. What book um, did you get, Creighton? The Sounds of, the, of Two Eyes Opening, and it's uh, by Spot, and it's a oh, yeah. punk, you know, SoCal anthology, pretty much. But it's got early pics of Keith Morris and, and the flag and stuff like that, and skateboarding and surfing, and I'm a dork for punk rock and skateboarding and surfing. It's, it's the three of my favorite things. So my kids will soon enough be old enough to start flipping through a lot of very similar books. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's one of those stupid books Dad has again. Scary with like, ass punk rockers so, again. Yeah, there exactly. I picked up a Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies compact disc. Terror in America, live in the USA, 1993. Morning contains offensive material not to be put in all hands. I would have to agree with that last little bit. This is the first thing that caught my eye when I was downstairs. And I honestly look at live footage of Gigi on YouTube just to kill time. <laughs> it's seriously some entertaining stuff. I think someone told me that Eric Andre said that Gigi was his favorite stand-up comic in one of these. The last bit I watched online, there are three segments of his last day. Somebody followed him around after a show, he was just running around New York, and nobody get him in, a, like he couldn't pick up a cab, because he was, no cab drivers would pick him up, and all of his fans were following him down the street. He was just like, ah, I just wanna go get high, everybody leave me alone, woo! Get me the fuck out of here. Why don't you go back to get high? I think the, the least offensive song title here is, uh, Wendy and Tilla? Be my fucking whore, Wendy and Tilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is live. Getting them in the studio would be hilarious. And on the other end of the spectrum, Ola Bell Reed and Southern Mount Music on the Mason Dixon line. Box set. I don't really know too much about Ola Bell Reed. There's a couple radio shows where I live in, in Asheville that play a lot of this kind of stuff. And every time she comes on, I'm like, what is that? In the river and I've been baptized. Now I'm hanging ground. Now I'm hanging ground. So that's it. That's my last thing in my bag. Cool. I picked up some DVDs too. I love rock docs and all oh, that kind radical. of stuff. So I got End of the Century, Ramones. You know, the famous thing about the Ramones is they would always stop and start, you know, and have arguments on stage. Fuck you all. Come on, take it, take it. Go, quick, lively. What the fuck? John Cale, Fragments of Rainy Season. I have the disc, like the, just the audio disc of it, but I didn't know it was filmed. And a couple of Nick Cave ones, Live in London yes. and uh, 20,000 Days on Earth. Great documentary that's just like, it's good cinema. I get a huge amount of energy from... From picking up singular... People and terrifying them. This is uh, 2008, so it's like Dig Lazarus, Dig Record, some really good hits too. Really wings and with maximum pain, I call upon the author to explain. Stoked as hell, at least just like before the show and you're like, I don't like performing or whatever, you know, like be in front of people or whatever, yeah. like watch this shit. And yeah. Like, All right, we, let's go we, kill somebody. We played, we played in Bergen, <laughs> it was Nick Cave in the Bad Seas in, in Bergen, Norway, and we played right before them, I think. Yeah. And I've never seen anything like that. It was just the power emanating from that stage was like, it was just insane. Goosebumps and fear and like. Hell yeah. Unbelievable, man. God and the devil and oh, yeah. I've everything never, in between. I also got to see him wearing a baseball hat. Yeah. He's wearing an L.A. Dodgers hat in the lobby. We're like, holy shit, someone get the camera. And hell no. No, God How no. There you. Fucking put that camera up your butt. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's all that's in my bag. Good job. Back at you. Love you. Love you. <laughs>